Hey guys, this is Ruby as always, and welcome back to the final part, part 3, of the Big Reactors tutorial that I'm doing. Uh, so, in the first episode we covered reactors and how they work and uh, kind of how to config them up. Second one, we covered the different types of uh, turbines and then using uh, reactors to uh, push the turbine. And today we're going to talk about automating and using computer craft and all that fun stuff. So. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as interesting as I can. I know computer craft can honestly get quite boring, so uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna dwell on anything too too long, uh, and we're just gonna continue on. So let's start with reactors. Now reactors have the most uh, computer craft API calls. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this script here. And there we go. So this script starts out pretty easy in that it, uh, while true, do. And this pretty much just means it's going to constantly loop. Uh, and if we look down here, you can see this is where the end's going to be. And it's going to sleep for five seconds at the end of this. You don't, you, you don't have to make it sleep, but honestly, you don't need this thing to be updated in real time. You probably could even sleep it for like a minute. Because uh, nothing really catastrophic is going to happen in a minute. Uh, but let's go ahead and come back up here. So uh, I am using the advanced computers with these. I prefer to use these because you get some syntax highlighted and you can click your mouse. You can use the scroll wheel. I don't know if you can do that in a normal one. You might be able to. Who knows? Uh, but the main thing is the syntax highlighting. Now, I don't write the code in the computer craft terminal. I use uh, GVim uh, and you just set it to the Lua uh, syntax highlighting and you can code it and it'll look all nice and cool stuff. But let's get started and let's get to the informational part. Uh, let me just blabber in. So uh, these first two lines here, we're actually declaring two variables, and we're pointing them to peripherals that are connected to this computer. The first one we have here is reactor 1, and we have mon. Now mon is going to be short for monitor, and as you can see here, we're making a peripheral.wrap call, and then we're giving it a string of a peripheral. So here you can see it's doing peripheral.wrap big reactors dash reactor underscore 4. Now, that means whenever you connect a wired modem up to the um, big reactors, now there is a computer port, you see this guy right here, is that you're going to connect a wired modem on top of this computer port and then use networking cable to connect to the back of the monitor and to the back of the PC. Now, you don't have to right-click and connect it to the computer. That's not really necessary for this. Uh, that's only if you were doing some other stuff with computer craft. So, uh, you'll know it's connected when it has this red outline around the networking cable. And as you can see, this guy is monitor 5, and this guy is uh, reactor 4. So that's where these guys are coming into play. Uh, now here, uh, this is the script that I wrote for my uh, personal LP world. And I am, I'm actually, uh, this is just one reactor, but I am monitoring two reactors. So I just commented this part out, and you do that in Lua by two dashes. And in, in the advanced computers, it'll turn the line green. So there's probably better ways to do this, uh, but I wanted it to be the most understandable because I did give this code out, and I'm going to be giving all this code out today uh, down in the description below, uh, and you'll get pastebin uh, links to where you can download everything. So this first line, we're sitting here, we're setting the cursor position, that's all that means, and we're setting it to uh, column 1, row 1, as you can see. And this next one, we're setting the text color to white. Then the third one, we're writing active, which is right there, as you can see. The next one, we're setting the text color to lime. And then the last one, we're writing reactor1.getactive. Now, dot get active, that is a, a API call for the reactor. Now, uh, Big Reactors has a huge API list. Uh, we're going to get into that in a minute. We're going to kind of skim over it. I'm not going to go into detail about every single uh, API call. But dot get active is just one of them, and as you can see, since the reactor is on, we get a true. If it was off, if we deactivate that reactor, and we give it about five seconds to refresh, it will turn to. Oh, we got to actually start the script. <laughs> that would probably help. There you go. It'll turn to false. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would explain everything, huh? Uh, and let's go ahead and turn this guy back on. Whoops, on, please. All right. And uh, so uh, the rest of these are going to all be the same, except we are just changing the different API calls. This one's for RF a tick, and it's get energy produced last tick. This next one is getting the amount of RF that it has stored within it. 
and that's a dot get energy stored. And these last two are just the heating levels. So uh, false, uh, if we start the script again, you can see that's going to turn to true. How much RF per tick it's producing, the RF that's stored, that just means it's storing 10 million. Uh, you can also do some different like kind of math dot floors and stuff if you want to just get uh, easier numbers to read out of this. Uh, casing heat's 431 and fuel heat's 450. So now as for oof, the um, the different API calls, if we go ahead and take a look at this guy. So here is the first, we're missing a couple here that I got on comment from the code. But you can see get connected, true, that just means that you're connected to the reactor. Uh, dot get active uh, is just meaning if the turbo, if the reactor is on. Number of control rods, as you can tell, a lot of these are very self-explanatory. The developer of Big Reactors did a very good job of explaining them. Uh, and we can see we've only got one control rod. Energy stored, 10 million. Get fuel temperature 449, get casing temperature 431, get fuel amount 1120, uh, 228, and uh, that's just the amount of fuel within the uh, reactor. Get waste amount, that's how much waste we have in there, and uh, get fuel amount max, that's how much fuel it can hold in total. Get control rod name, and you have to give this one an index, an index being the, uh, the number control rod that it is, and this one, since it only has one, it's going to be zero and you can get its name and I named it the only control rod <laughs> so that we could tell what was going on and get the control rod level this just means how much it's depleting um, of the of the fuel like if you set it to 10 20 90 whatever percent uh, get energy produced last tick this is how much we can tell how much RF per tick it's producing get coolant amount uh, this doesn't apply to these regular reactors get coolant type doesn't apply get hot fluid and hot fluid type amount in uh, type doesn't apply and get fuel reactivity and that's only uh, that's just pretty much you could look here and see that as well so uh, the other two that we're missing and some of the other API calls and this one you can see how I'm doing this is print get connected uh, that's a comma reactor dot get connected and it's just a bunch of these we're missing two and that is the get fuel consumed last tick so if we take a look at these, you can see how much fuel it consumed and if it is actively cooled. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple more that you can see. And these are ones that do things for the reactor that I didn't want to code into here because it will kind of mess with things. But dot set active, and that's going to be a boolean. You want to pass that as true, like you would write true right here. If you wanted to turn it on, and then you would write false if you wanted to turn it off. And here you can set all control rods levels, and this just means how much of uh, the fuel rod you're going to bypass, so 10, 20, 30, 90, 100%, whatever. And then you can actually set individual control rods levels here with the, with the index, so that would be 0 through how many ever control rods you have, minus 1, and then what the level you want to set it to, and the final one is just a command to eject the waste, and it sleeps for 5 seconds. Whew, that was a lot of talking. Now onto the turbines. This one doesn't have quite as much stuff as the reactors. Uh, as you can see, they look pretty similar, except uh, we're getting some different things on here, like the rotor speeds and the fluid rates and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the script. These are going to be quite identical because they're based off the same code. Uh, but here you can see we're just swapping it out for the turbine and a different monitor. And uh, a lot of these function calls are going to be the same, like dot get active, get energy produced last tick. Uh, get energy stored and here's where things get kind of different where you get rotor speed and get input amount Easy enough now if we come over here to this one this one as you can see can fit all on one page So we don't have to on write anything or uh, on comment anything, but you can see dot get connected uh, That's just if it's connected active energy stored rotor speed This is how fast the rotor is spinning so you can see it is spinning at 998.7 uh, and this apparently rounds up or at least that this rounds up in the GUI. Uh, get input amount. That is whatever this is set to here, the max flow. And get input type. That's what it's getting in, which is steam. Get output amount, 2000, because uh, we didn't mess with that. Get output type is water, because the, when, when the turbine uses the steam, it produces water. And get fluid amount max is 2000. Get fluid flow rate, 250. 
get fluid rate max is 250 and get fluid flow rate max max is 2000 because that's what it can be at the most and then to get energy produced last tick is 2607 rf per tick and if we take a look at this this thing has whoops this thing has a couple of commands so if we come down here you can do turbine dot set active and that's a boolean again so you do true or false and dot of uh, set fluid flow max rate and this is where you could control it from 0 to 2000 to control this stuff right here so easy enough right sure <laughs> that's a lot of talking that's a lot of information i'm going to link the api chart uh down in the description and it kind of goes every goes over everything uh what it expects and all that fun stuff so now on to the more fun part and the automation part. So uh, here I have a reactor and we have it hooked up to an advanced computer. We've got some uh, goodies coming out of it and going into it. And back here I just have a uh, resonant energy cell kind of array. And this is just for taking power out of this machine. So here we can see we have a reactor and it's currently at 370,000 RF stored. Now uh, if we take a look at this script, let me just kind of explain it is that we have a while true do loop again you guys will recognize this in another sleep for five seconds you could probably even extend this uh, as well to like 60 seconds or something like that to give you a little buffer room uh, but here we're, we're, we are wrapping the big reactor again and we have a couple variables here we're not doing any kind of peripherals with this this is just simply so I don't have to put it into the code um, but here you can see that we are uh, declaring low and high now low we're using as the amount of RF stored that we would like to turn the uh, reactor back on at and high is going to be the amount of RF stored that we'd like to turn it back off at so uh, here's just two plain hold uh, if loops uh, if statements I'm sorry and it's dot uh, it's, uh, if reactor dot get energy stored is lesser than or equal to low then it's going to reactor dot set active true and this just pretty much means if it is equal to a hundred thousand or less than a hundred thousand so even ninety nine 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 it would still turn it back on but if it's one thousand one hundred thousand and one it's not going to turn it back on um, there's no kind of buffer area in that and then the second one is pretty much the same except the opposite is that it's if reactor dot get energy stored is greater than or equal to high then turn then reactor dot set active false so this pretty much means if it is if it has two hundred thousand rf or it has more than two hundred thousand rf it's going to turn it off so if we go ahead and start this program and we have three hundred and seventy thousand so that's why it's off right now if we go ahead and drain some of this out and that should have been enough you can see it dropped back below 100,000, so it actually kicked back on. And if we watch it, and once it gets over 200,000, the computer will automatically do that. Dot set active false, as you can see there, and it just cut off. And it's going to drain the energy as soon as we hook it back up. One, two, three. And if we come back here, boom, it's back down to zero, and it kicked it back on once it went through its sleep cycle and it's going to build it up again. Now I use this exact system. Obviously you don't want to set it to 100,000 to 200,000. That's not a whole lot. This thing's going to be kicking on and off all, to, all the time uh, and you really don't want to do that. This is the way I hooked it up. I know some people actually have uh, hooked it up where they'll set the control rod where you can actually do reactor dot and then I think it's set or set all control rods rod levels and you can then set these all guys to 90 and if it ever gets our whoa no we don't want to do that <laughs> we want to set them to zero and uh, here we'll set these guys to 90 and then we'll set all control rod levels to 90 and so this way um, is that these guys will automatically kind of get um, is that it'll control it by the control rod instead of by the uh, setting it on and off and this guy actually we actually need to turn this guy back on uh, there we go so now you can see that this guy is set to zero 
and if we watch it, and once it gets back above 200,000, and we give it a couple seconds, you can see this went ahead and got set to 90. So basically, that's just making it produce less power, but it has a uh, quicker kick-on efficiency. So if we go ahead and hook this guy back up, give it a couple seconds to drain, and disconnect it, you can see, boom, it's already kicking back up to thousands of RF per tick, and it's set back to zero. So those are two different ways that you can do it. Um, I didn't do the control rod method. Um, I did just the set actives. But uh, honestly, it's whatever you prefer. Just try, try out both of them. See which one you prefer. If you like the control rod on how much quicker it is, that's cool. Uh, in my personal LP world, I have like 300-something million in RF storage. So it, it's really, you know, <laughs> not the most efficient. It doesn't matter to me. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. We've kind of gone over all the computer craft stuff. Don't forget, all of these scripts are going to be down in the description below. So you can take a look at them yourself. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I learned something. Hopefully I wasn't too boring. Hopefully there's still people watching this late in the video. <laughs> Who knows? But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, a rating would be very much appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.